Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering the backlash on the woke ESG scam. Larry Fink, head of BlackRock, used to be Mr. ESG. He had to stop pushing ESG because the backlash was so severe, which goes to tell you there's nothing wrong with backlash. If you see something you don't like, speak up about it. You're going to get results. It's causing panic as ESG gets rejected by customers and investors all over Wall Street. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from Forbes, I've been looking forward to doing this story, how the backlash to ESG can create a crisis for companies. This is written by a senior contributor to Forbes who covers crisis-related news issues and topics. This is their crisis expert. So yes, there is a crisis at these companies because people have just about had it, whether it's customers or investors or red states or red state politicians, conservatives, normal people, they've been pushing back on these companies and their ridiculous agenda. This article is essentially a guide for companies and executives to figure out how to handle and deal with all the backlash they're getting because they thought they'd just get away with this. Larry Fink, Mr. Poster Boy for ESG, was called out in a Wall Street Journal opinion article by Charlie Munger back in 2022, which probably helped create the cracks in the ESG fortress. Charlie Munger, one of the major owners of and executive at Berkshire Hathaway, is also heavily supportive of how China does business so it's not like Charlie Munger is Mr. Perfect, but he called it out well here. In this ESG critical article, here's what Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway partner, Charlie Munger, had to say. Quote, I think the world of Larry Fink, but I'm not sure I want him to be my emperor. Many CEOs, no doubt, privately agree. As Americans have poured savings into exchange-traded and mutual funds, index providers have become the de facto largest shareholders of public companies. So as people put money into index traded funds, which is when you say, I just want to buy the top companies on the stock market right now, or your pension fund invests in these things, it gives control to the money managers like Larry Fink who control these funds. Assets under management by Larry Fink's company BlackRock have doubled to $10 trillion since 2016. And by now it's even more. Asset managers, including BlackRock, Vanguard, and Fidelity, mostly invest their customers' money in broad baskets of stocks that track an index like the standard in Poor's 500. Index funds make sense for most retail investors who lack the time and information to actively trade stocks, but lately these so-called passive index providers have themselves become activists and not in a good way. Rather than push companies to pursue higher profits, they're trying to impose their political agenda on corporate America. CEOs and corporate bonds can find themselves on the wrong end of a shareholder vote if they refuse to accommodate BlackRock's policy preferences on climate and, quote, stakeholder capitalism, which we also call woke capitalism. Two years ago, Larry Fink wrote a letter to CEOs threatening to vote against corporate managers if they didn't follow ESG disclosures prescribed by the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board. That Michael Bloomberg-backed outfit wants companies to report minutiae from how much plastic they use to sales from sugary beverages. In his annual shareholder letter, Larry Fink did have some nice words about capitalism, which has been very, very good to him. But he also lectured CEOs that, quote, employees are increasingly looking to their employer as the most trusted, competent, and ethical source of information and quote, stakeholders, including employees, customers, communities, and regulators, need to know where we stand on the societal issues intrinsic to our company's long-term success. These things were never intrinsic to any company's long-term success. Larry Fink, for whatever reason, decided to go along with the ESG woke agenda, and then they wound up in this situation. Since then, Larry Fink has had to disavow ESG and drop the use of the name ESG to target any of their funds. He's also taken on investments from Saudi Arabia's oil companies, so it's not like 
He's sticking to the ESG woke agenda completely either anymore. But this crisis communicator, this public relations person, is writing a pretty important article about it in Forbes because companies are starting to get yelled at and he's trying to help them out wherever he can. What's at stake? Given the divisive nature of society, people are more likely than not to have strong opinions or outright and vocal opposition to the actions, decisions, and policies of companies and organizations. The backlash to ESG can create a crisis by putting corporate executives on the defensive because of critical comments on social media, protests, and boycotts. The backlash. To date, almost half of all surveyed businesses, 48%, have experienced backlash to their ESG policies or activities, according to a study released last month by the conference board. That's a lot of companies. So companies, it's not just like one old lady calls them and says, why are you doing this with my money? This is, they're getting a lot of bad feedback from investors, from customers saying, Stop wasting our money. We want a return on our investment. We want to buy products that aren't trying to push a political agenda. The survey of 125 executives at large companies found that 31% of the backlash came from state policymakers and political candidates, 22% from federal policymakers, 20% from employees, and 9% from customers. Different forms of blowback at these companies. That backlash has manifested itself in various ways, according to Paul Washington, executive director of the conference board's ESG center. So these are the ESG people still running the ESG scam, trying to keep whatever influence and money they still can by pushing ESG. He said this, they include government officials who've held press conferences and hearings, issued letters and introduced legislation and regulations to block the ESG nonsense. Consumers who have engaged in boycotts, which as we've seen, the Bud Light boycott, the Target boycott, boycotts have been more effective than ever in the year 2023. Employees who have expressed their views at meetings and in internal surveys, because there's all sorts of abuse of employees going on, telling them that they're racist, telling them that they need to learn and relearn how to deal with other people of different races after people already know how to do that. You treat everyone the way you want to be treated. That's it. There's no such thing as microaggressions. That's part of the woke agenda. This writer warns them they need to buckle up for a bumpy ride. Things could get worse before they get better. 61% of companies expect ESG backlash to continue or intensify over the next two years, according to the ESG conference board. The businesses said they expect the backlash to spread from federal and state officials and candidates to local officials, consumers, employees, and business partners. Quote, so executives need to buckle up for a long and bumpy ride, Washington warned. Quote, the increase in both intensity and frequency of backlash will likely be driven by emotionally charged topics, such as hot button social issues, and the transition to a more sustainable form of energy that raises fear of job losses, he predicted. We've already had massive job losses because of the destruction of the United States economy and all Western economies really by pushing the theory that we no longer need fossil fuels or that if we continue with fossil fuels, somehow that's going to destroy the world. Of course, this is at the heart of ESG and it's at the heart of the woke agenda. Take away everyone's lifestyle in the meantime, China, India, other countries continue pushing their coal plants, polluting along the way they always have been, if not even more, while Western countries are supposed to collapse themselves and stop having a lifestyle that's anything above a third world lifestyle. There's political opposition. Sometimes the backlash can take an organized and partisan form. This past March, 19 governors signed a joint statement opposing Joe Biden's ESG agenda. They claim that the proliferation of ESG throughout America is a direct threat to the American economy, individual economic freedom, and our way of life, putting investment decisions in the hands of the woke mob to bypass the ballot box and inject political ideology into investment decisions, corporate governance, and the everyday economy. And they're absolutely right. That is what is being pushed on the country, and the only thing that can result from it is a lower standard of living for no reason other than people wanting to take away the power 
of the middle class. The governor said they plan to lead state-led initiatives to protect individuals from the ESG movement, including potentially blocking ESG at the state and local levels and withholding state pension funds from firms that push ESG. What's the silver lining? Quote, despite the negative connotations, ESG backlash can be a clarifying moment for companies, according to the conference board's report. These are the, again, the conference board are the ESG people trying to say, hey, look, we want to stay wealthy over at the ESG conference board. We want the consulting contracts. Don't worry so much. Just keep taking the abuse for us. Quote, it can prompt companies to reevaluate their ESG strategy, priorities, and commitments. This requires companies to engage the board and senior management in a candid discussion of whether the company is still, quote, in ESG and multi-stakeholder capitalism, and if so, in what ways. Companies know there's no sense for them to associate themselves with this ESG nonsense. The only companies that are still doing it are companies that are either forced to do it or are more concerned about pushing their political agenda than they are making money, like Disney. How should you respond to this backlash? And what's funny is this is quite a short write-up from this author. You've only got two little paragraphs for how to deal with trying to justify things that make absolutely no sense for business. Many of these things are actually illegal to do because of the affirmative action ruling of the Supreme Court. But here's what they recommend. Just as they would for any crisis, business leaders should ensure their crisis management plans account for potential backlash to ESG or any other politics, actions, or decisions they make. And they should include those scenarios when testing their plans in drills and simulations. So you need to go through drills and simulations to try to protect yourself from saying the wrong thing or doing, quote, the wrong thing when you get held accountable by your customers and your investors. Quote, CEOs can't respond emotionally, but they need to understand the emotions that are fueling backlash, including those arising from hot button social issues and from the fear of losing jobs in the transition to renewable energy, Washington concluded. So don't worry about all the jobs you're going to lose trying to transition to energy that is not sustainable for what society currently consumes. The backlash to the woke ESG scam policies is severe. Companies are hearing it from their customers. They're hearing it from their employees. They're hearing it from their investors. And they're now in crisis management mode, trying to defend whatever they can as they get called to account for the silliness of the ESG agenda. It looks like they're in some severe trouble, especially since Larry Fink has backed away from using the term ESG whatsoever. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.